coming up next on the Holistic Wealth Podcast. During this time of year, we definitely have more allergies, but don't also forget that even in the fall and the winter, people will say, oh my gosh, why am I dealing with allergies now? It's the fall or the winter. You have to think about ragweed and you need to think about mold. Those are things that are really big during that time. So it's kind of a year round thing. But luckily, when we're on a show like yours right now, we can talk about these things. So hopefully we can also educate and also give you some things that can also make life a little bit easier during those times. You're listening to the Holistic Wealth Podcast with host Keisha Blair, author of Holistic Wealth and founder of the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And now here's your host, Keisha Blair. Welcome to the Holistic Wealth Podcast. And today we have a very special guest with us. We have Dr. Ken Redcross. And Dr. Ken Redcross is the author of Bond, The Four Cornerstones of a Lasting and Caring Relationship with Your Doctor, and founder of a unique concierge service providing patient-first treatment through strategic health services. As one of the first full-service concierge personalized medical practices in the United States, Dr. Redcross's patient portfolio includes executives, athletes, and entertainers, as well as individuals from all walks and stages of life. Dr. Red Cross frequently shares his expertise in managing everyday health challenges, embracing both natural and alternative methods of healing. He has also authored numerous health articles for MSN Latino and Everyday Health. Dr. Red Cross earned his MD from Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center in New York, specializing in internal medicine and you can check out his website at drkenredcross.com dr redcross we're so happy to have you here me too thank you so much for having me back i always love this particular podcast because you share so much valuable information so i agree you are sharing a lot of wealth so i'm happy to be back on absolutely thank you so much for that and so today we're talking about wellness tips to help prevent or relieve seasonal allergies, which is a big thing. Now, we know over 50 million Americans suffer from seasonal allergies. And in Canada, that number is well over one in four. So it's huge in North America. We're all affected by this somewhere or the other, you know, in terms of family members or ourselves. So I just wanted to get right into it, you know, with discussing you know, who's more likely to suffer from seasonal allergies in terms of both genetics and environmental aspects? Like, who's more likely to suffer from this and why? I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, people may not recognize, but there is a little bit of a genetic predisposition to have an allergy. You know, take it from me, an only child who both parents have allergies out the wazoo, and I deal with it. So there is a genetic predisposition there. The other thing is, and Keisha, this is something we'll laugh at because we talked about this on the show before. But those in urban areas, especially here in New York, are really dealing with allergies. The reason why I said urban areas, because that gets us back into the cockroach discussion. Right. As we talked about before, I believe I'm not a specialist in cockroaches, but I'll tell you, they cause a big problem, especially in the urban area. Um, In a lot of areas where, you know, where you're still having some, some pollination patterns and buildings and things of that nature. So, Don't think just because you're in the urban areas, you need to be out in the wilderness and get these things. So we need to be aware of it. Yeah, no, that's good for sure. And as we're getting back out there in spring and full force, that's absolutely important to remember. So in terms of the symptoms that people can expect, what are the major symptoms people should look out for? So look, when you're dealing with allergies, there's some of the ones that, you know, we've known since we were probably in elementary school, such as that itchy throat, um, sneezing. Uh, runny, red eye, those sort of things. Luckily, when we deal with allergy, then you come into the doctor's office with that, we're able to kind of nail that right on the head and know like, okay, we need to, in a sense, kind of cut off that drippy faucet, right? In a sense of what's going on. And so because we are during this time of year, we definitely have more allergies, but don't also forget that even in the fall and the winter, people will say, oh my gosh, why am I dealing with allergies now? It's the fall or the winter. You have to think about ragweed and you need to think about mold. Those are things that are really big during that time. So it's kind of a year round thing. But luckily, when we're on a show like yours right now, we can talk about these things. So hopefully we can also educate 
and also give you some things that can also make life a little bit easier during those times. You know, it's so funny because as we're talking about allergies and I know a lot of parents are listening in, you know, and wondering what they should look out for. But when do parents typically start noticing these symptoms in their kids with allergy symptoms? That's another good question because it doesn't have to be like when the kid can kind of tell you they're having these symptoms. There's been studies that show it can even be when the child is one year old or so. When they're sneezing or, you know, you see that they're dripping a little bit here and there. All of those can be allergies at that time. So even a year is a time to really be aware of this, especially if some of you watching or listening know that you already have an increased risk for allergies or that you yourself are actually someone who deals with allergies. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's interesting. I had no idea it started that young. But so so what are some of the closer to the earth solutions in terms of remedies? that you prefer to give your patients and even your own family for allergies that we're thinking about for both kids and adults. Yeah. And that's the thing that can be kind of tough with kids and adults, especially over the counter, right? You've already said, look, there's 50 million Americans and Canadians even higher who are dealing with the same thing. So just like me, I want you looking for something that's, as you mentioned, that I always say closer to the earth, that's easier to take. One of the things you guys know, I'm a big fan of homeopathy and especially in this case, boron's allergy comb is like my go-to in the family and for my patients. But why? Number one, I know that when I'm dealing with homeopathy, I don't have to worry about certain things, drug to drug interactions. I don't have to worry about side effects. I could also know that there aren't any artificial dyes, things like that, that I don't want in my family. And I know that you don't want in yours. I also love the fact that boron's allergy calm is one of those things everyone can take on the go. We're talking about how beautiful it is here in New York and we're dealing with allergies. You want something that you don't need to take water. They're little dissolvable pellets that you can take and really make a big difference, especially when you're talking about the itchy throat, the sneezing, things of that nature. So, so important. So the reason why I mentioned this particular remedy as far as that closer to the earth is that it keeps our lives moving and keeps our lives easier moving and, and being managed without a lot of worrying about other things. Yeah, no, that makes sense for sure. And so in terms of these medicines, the closer to the earth remedies, what do you find most appealing in terms of, and I know you mentioned some of those aspects just now. Is there anything else more appealing that people need to consider when they're shopping around? You mentioned, you know, like they're looking at these over-the-counter medications. Is there anything else that they should think about when they're choosing and and what's more appealing with homeopathy? Well, you know, one of the things you have to worry about, I mean, the artificial dyes and things of that nature are becoming a bigger deal. We're learning a lot about these artificial dyes and so forth when it comes to these allergies. Maybe that's one of the reasons why we're having more allergies. Also, the fact that we may not have been exposed to peanuts at a younger age. And now you're seeing, you guys remember, I remember going to birthday parties in elementary school and you brought everything you wanted to. There was nothing. Now you can't do nuts. You can't do this and that. And you guys remember, it wasn't like that. And so When you're thinking about things you're looking at over the counter, please, please, please think about what else is in there. Because one of the things you're realizing is that some of these allergy meds that are over the counter, guess what? There's other things added to it. Maybe there's a little Tylenol. Maybe there's a little, and for sinus issues, we'll talk about that another time. So it's not usually just a single ingredient, right? That's why homeopathy works with the body to help with the symptoms, the sneezing, the itchy throat, the runny eyes, those things that are important. So that's why I say just be mindful for you as the adult and obviously with your child about, you know, is there really anything else in here? Just read the label and see if there's anything else in there besides this particular agent that they're saying is going to help with the allergy. So just be careful and thoughtful. That's all. That's so funny that you mentioned that when you mentioned the word Tylenol, because we were having a discussion before we started. My daughter was having seasonal allergy symptoms just yesterday. She was stifling. And with everything opening up and, you know, them playing outside, she actually fell, broke her collarbone. Uh And it's amazing that you said, be careful of the added painkillers and be careful of the added things. Because now not only is she dealing with seasonal allergies, she's dealing with a broken collarbone. So we have all of these, you know, other things to think about when we think about treating her for allergies and now the pain from that. So it's interesting that, you know, as parents, we're dealing with like the allergies. Yes. Yeah. But then they're getting outdoors. They're playing Life now. Goes on. Right. Right. They're breaking bones, too. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately. So it's like a lot of things come by to think about. So I really appreciate when you say, you know, when you're going, you know, look at the added ingredients and everything, because it might be cumulative too, right? In terms of the potential for overdose. No, but exactly. No, it's good that you mentioned that. Number one, let's hope she heals quickly for a baby. I'm sorry to hear that. But I'll tell you, you're right. So she has to deal with that collarbone, all in all. Once again, everyone, Western medicine is not necessarily evil. We're just talking about the best time to think about it. Homeopathy tends to be that first thing up that I think about. In this case, Western medicine, acetaminophen and Tylenol is the way to go. But it's also key to recognize that if she's taking that now and she has these allergies, if we don't have this discussion, everyone, you're stacking on top of it. You're stacking Tylenol, stacking Tylenol. You're doing more and more. So once again, it's that mindful piece, making sure you're doing a little bit of education along, you're along the way. And really, really looking at what you're putting in your body and try to stay closer to the earth when we have to do these things. Yes. No, absolutely. For most seasonal allergies, they don't require a visit to the doctor. And of course, you know, I myself as a parent, sometimes I wonder, when do I go in? And I know some adults who are thinking the same thing. So I just wanted to ask, what signs do we look out for to decide, OK, it's time to visit. It's time to go in to see the doctor. Yeah. One of the things I'll I always have this special window and the, and the window is special and it's kind of pretty good as far as accuracy with being that first 48 hours. Now, that 48 hours with allergies are different, right? We get a little drippy. This stuff happens throughout the week. So it doesn't mean you need to see the doctor then. But if you're developing things like fever, listlessness, or especially in a child, they can't really verbalize things, but you see they're kind of, you know, laying around and so forth. Allergies don't typically cause that, right? Allergies, we still can go through our days. We just don't feel the best. We feel like our head can be a balloon or something like that. But it doesn't really knock you down for the count, which a cold can, and also bring a fever. And also kind of discoloration of, of secretions from the nose, from the cough. So there are a lot of different things that should let you know, but your child shouldn't appear sick. They can still be runny and all of that stuff, but not be kind of down for the count. So they're very different when you put them side by side. Yeah, no, for sure. I find these tips very helpful and very topical. So thank you so much, Dr. Red Cross, for educating us on this and just even reminding us that sometimes we're so busy. We get so busy with our day to day lives. We forget a lot of these things that instinctively and intuitively, you know, we should know or we know. So once again, thank you so much. I know we're going to be doing this series and we're going to be addressing sinus in the next episode. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to mention, Dr. Red Cross, before we close out this episode. But yeah, feel free. There is, everyone. And it's something for us on the adult side, but especially for our children. Remember, when these allergies and so forth come along, one of the big things that really is impacted that I love to talk about is sleep. You know, we talk sleep because you're doing two things. You're restoring and refreshing. And especially for our little body, they need more than us. I always talk about us as adults getting that seven and a half hours where kids need more, a couple hours more, about an hour and a half more. So that also can impact school. How? Making a test, cognition, memory, attention deficit. So all of these things that we're, that are impacted by allergies are not just the symptoms that we see with the runny nose, the sneezing, but also the sleep deprivation that can take place. So that's why it's important so that we know kind of some of these plans, some of these things that we can bring into the home. Um, like I mentioned, uh, the allergy calm and other things that can be really beneficial. So let's think about that too. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point, especially because we're battling sleep deprivation, especially with our kids. Man, when we talk about, you know, screens and like the phones and the iPads. And so it's cumulative well, too, as you know. Awesome we mentioned before too, especially with that sleep deprivation from other factors. And now we pile on allergies and we're piling on different things and then it gets, just gets worse. So thank you so much for those reminders, Dr. Red Cross. And, you know, just closing out this episode. And as I said before, this is a series. So you'll see a series of episodes on these topics that I mentioned. And so again, everyone, Dr. Red Cross, thank you so much for joining us this week on the Holistic Wealth Podcast. And once again, thank you so much for those tips. Thank you, guys. And once again, for the allergies, this is for two years of age and older for the allergy calm that I mentioned. So I can't wait to hopefully continue to provide good information for all of you out there. The Holistic Wealth Podcast with Keisha Blair is brought to you by. Have you joined the Institute on Holistic Wealth? If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? 
Choose your membership plan at the Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. As a member, you'll get access to free worksheets, advice, coaching, and an intentional design workshop. As you start to live a more holistically wealthy lifestyle, you'll want to stay for a very long time. So go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. If you haven't read the book yet, pick up a copy of the award-winning best-selling Holistic Wealth 36 Life Lessons to help you recover from disruption, find your life purpose, and achieve financial freedom.